Hi, this is Dale from Power Equipment Direct. Today we're going to talk about everything you need to do to keep your chainsaw running at its top performance level, whether you use it every day, every week, or just once a year. The first thing you want to do is go through your manual. You want to see what the maintenance schedule says in there. If you don't have a manual, you can click on the link below. That will take you into the manual lookup tool. You'll also want to make sure that you have all the tools you're going to need to do the maintenance. You'll want your scrunch. I would suggest a pair of safety glasses, in case, especially if you're going to use any kind of spray cleaners. And you should probably have some kind of brushes to clean debris out. Uh, a small wire brush will work. Even an old toothbrush will do the job. If you're going to replace anything like a spark plug or an air filter, you want to make sure you get those in advance. So a few things you should keep in mind while you're doing maintenance on your saw. You never want to maintain a hot saw. This muffler gets really hot. There's a lot of chances you could burn yourself. Uh, you want to make sure it's cool when you clean it. Another thing is you really don't want to use carburetor cleaner on it. Chances are you might use too much. Remember this needs fuel and oil mix. When you're using carburetor cleaner you're just using a straight fuel. So you definitely don't want to do that. One thing I do want to mention, anytime you're going to do any kind of maintenance on one of these saws, the first thing you want to do is you want to pull the spark plug boot off the spark plug. That way there's no chance that the saw is going to accidentally start. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is give an overall inspection of the saw. You want to take any kind of brush you have. You want to clean out any debris that's on the outside of the saw. You want to clean out your vents here. If you have an air compressor and you can blow air through it, even better. But you want to make sure this is what draws the air into the saw that keeps the engine cool. So you want to make sure those are clean. Alright, so the next thing would be to inspect the fuel filter. It sits on the end of a hose that sits inside your fuel tank. All you need to do is take the needle nose inside, reach in, grab that hose and pull it out. Just inspect it for dirt. If it looks really dirty, you'll want to change it. All it does is it just pops off the end of this hose and just replace it with a new one. When you're done with it, pop it back in the tank and that's it. It just hangs in the bottom of the tank and picks up your fuel. You'll also want to clean or change the air filter. And the way you do that is you take your scrunch either unscrew if you are screw on or unclip your air filter housing and remove that. You'll want to take your brush, any debris that's on the inside of this housing, you'll want to loosen up and clean out. Get as much as you can out of it. If you have an air hose when you're done, you want to make sure you blow that out. Get as much as out of here as you can. This is your air filter. This one screws on, some of them clip on. When you take it off, this is a felt filter. You want to check if there's no dirt impregnated in here or if there is just loose debris, you want to take your brush, you want to brush all the loose debris out of it. If it's impregnated with dirt, you'll want to change it. Some of these do come as a mesh, a nylon mesh or a metal mesh. Those can be washed in your sink with soap and water, dried out and replaced on the saw. If you're going to change your spark plug, change it or at least inspect it. Your scrunch does have a spark plug socket on the end of it. Put that on, loosen the plug. You'll want to loosen it up, unscrew your spark plug, you'll want to check it. If it's dirty, you might want to clean it off with a wire brush. If it looks burnt, if you see this, the tip is burned off or if it's a, any discoloration, you'll want to change the plug. Screw it in by hand as far as you can. Snug it up with the scrunch. Always make sure you put your coil wire back on. You want to put your air filter back on. You'll also want to take this opportunity to clean any debris you see in the fins here out. Anything that's down in the flywheel compartment that you can get at with a little brush you want to do. I would not suggest that you stick a bunch of brush, your brush down inside along the carburetor. It's really easy to bend some of these really small carburetor linkages and you could throw the saw out of kilter. So you notice here you have a lot of wires, you have some vacuum hoses that are connected, you have some linkage connections, you have your throttle cable here. If you knock any of these off the saw wouldn't run. So you want to make sure you don't, don't get in this area. Try not to. If you have compressed air or something, you might want to blow it out. But I would not suggest sticking any one of these brushes down inside there. Um, another thing you'll want to do is, you want to make sure you take your cover off. So once the cover's off, you want to clean out any debris you have around here. This is your clutch right here. This is your brake band. It goes right around the clutch here. It's very important that when you do clean it, you get all this cleaned out. You want to make sure that there's no debris in here because that debris will wear that band down. You'll also notice you have, when you look at your bar, you're going to have an oiling hole. You want to make sure you clean all that area out. Make sure that you get that as clean as possible. Uh, this is also a good time to check your chain catcher here. Make sure that's in good shape. The chain catcher right here is underneath the saw. It's this little metal piece. What happens if the chain should get thrown? This is supposed to stop it from going past here and be safer. So you want to make sure this is always intact and it's not loose. Um, if you need to do any greasing, 
there's an e-clip here you would take out to get the clutch off and that's when you would do the greasing. Check your owner's manual for instructions on that. Okay, this has what they call a rim sprocket. So it's a little piece that slides up and down on this serrated gear and the driver from the chain rides inside each of these slots. So this piece alone can be replaced. You don't have to replace this whole clutch assembly. But what you would do is you just take this little e-clip off, slide this off, slide this off, slide the new one on, put it back on, put the e-clip back on. The way you tell it's worn is when it starts cutting into these dividers that are in the, in the, in the divide these slots up, when you start to wear when these wear down is when you want to replace it. So this saw has what we call a spur sprocket. It's made right onto the clutch drum. So if this ever wears out, you need to again take the e-clip off, take this off, take the whole clutch drum assembly off and replace that. The way to tell that is when that is worn is you'll see it starts to wear grooves in the teeth. And once those grooves with that starts cutting in, then the sprocket's no good, you want to replace it. Uh, some sprockets last for years, some sprockets wear pretty quickly. So you'll, you always want to check that. Usually every time you change the chain, you just give this a visual inspection. Okay, so just to show you some of the debris that does accumulate in the saw, I happen to have a Makita battery saw here that has a lot of use on it. And this is the kind of debris and buildup that we're talking about that you need to clean out. There's oiling holes in here that oil this bar. You have to make sure that those oil holes are all clear. So what you want to do is just take your brush and just brush away as much of this stuff as you can. If you want to take the bar and chain off and do it, that's great. Just clear this out. Make sure this is all clean. You want to clean out around the driver here. Uh, you'll also want to take your clutch cover and clean out all the debris that's in the clutch cover. Once it's all clean, make sure, wipe it to the best you can and reassemble it. At least try and get it this clean. When you're doing your maintenance, it's a great time to have your chain sharpened. We do have information on sharpening your own chain. Look at one of our other videos on that topic and you'll get all the instructions on how to do it. Um, if you only have one chain, it's all you also might want to consider getting a second chain. That way you can always have a sharp one and rotate in case one is damaged during use. The dangers of, have, of trying to use a saw with a dull chain is you're not going to get the kind of performance out of the saw that you want to get out of it. You're going to start putting more strain on the saw, you're going to start trying to muscle it through the wood more, and what you're doing is you're actually stopping the chain from cutting as well as it can. You're also putting undue stress on the saw and also undue stress on yourself. You always want to have a nice sharp chain and let the chain draw the bar through the wood. You don't want to ever have to force it. So always get a sharp chain. They're much safer to use and you'll get better performance out of them. Once you get your chain back and you've had it sharpened or you're replacing it with a brand new chain, what you want to do is you want to always let the chain get lubricated up. And the best way to do that is take a simple baggie. You can either use a quart size or a gallon size like this. You want to put the chain in the bag, take some of your bar oil and put it in, the bar, in, the, in here. Wrap it tight so that the chain is completely saturated in oil. Seal the bag up and let it sit. And let it sit half a day is fine. Overnight is better. Let as much of that oil get out of all those little orifices, all those little oily holes that are in the chain. And when you go to put it back on the saw, it'll be lubricated right from start up. So once you've done that, bring the chain back out. It's going to be pretty oily. Just take a, take a rag and just do a very slight wipe of the chain. You'll also want to take, I have what they call a bar groove cleaner here. You can also use just a uh, screwdriver, straight blade screwdriver. What you'll want to do is you'll want to drag this tool through the bar like this. It'll clean out any dirt, any debris that's in this bar. This is also a good time to make sure all the oiling holes in the bar, which are these little holes right here, are clear. You also want to take the bar and look down at it like this. Make sure the bar looks straight. You want to look at the edges, make sure these edges are flat. Once these edges start to bow out, it's time to replace the bar. You'll also want to go like this just with your hand and just feel it. If you feel any kind of burrs or anything, you might want to take a flat file and file that down a little bit. Check both sides of the bar. Now this would also be the time you'd want to rotate the bar because anytime you sharpen a chain you want to rotate the bar. So if you were using it in this position before, the next time you mount it, you want to turn it upside down. 
Every time you sharpen a chain, you'll want to rotate that. For detailed instructions on the mounting and tensioning of the chain, check out one of our other videos on that topic. Okay, what I'd like to do next is talk about how to check the safety devices on your saw. So the very first thing you want to do is make sure that your brake is working. Chain brake is locked when it's forward. It's released when it's pulled towards you. So what you want to do to check it is, you want to we'll put it in the lock position. You want to take a screwdriver or a scrunch and you want to see if you can move the chain. If you cannot move the chain, it's working correctly. If you have it locked and you can start to move the chain, that brake band is wearing out and it should get serviced and replaced. Okay, so the next thing you'll want to check is the trigger lockout. Okay, so this is your trigger right here. This is your trigger lockout, your throttle lockout. That trigger won't move unless this lockout is held down. This is a safety feature so you don't accidentally accelerate the saw. So you want to make sure that this does not move without the lockout being pressed down. And then you want to make sure that if you hold the lockdown down, the trigger moves freely, doesn't hang out. So you want to put your hand on here and make sure the trigger moves when it's suppressed. When this is not depressed, you want to make sure the trigger is locked. This is called a spark arrester. It's actually a metal screen that goes over the outlet from the muffler. And what that does is it stops, because this is used in woods, this stops any sparks that could come out of the muffler from exiting the, the saw and starting a fire. On this Domar saw, that's where it is. On this Husqvarna saw, it's right here. Basically, you just take a screw out, take this little cover off, and uh, it's just a screen that sits underneath that's easily replaced. So this is the pull cord or starter rope. If you see frayed or starting to wear through in any spot, you'll want to change it. Uh, you're better off having a dealer change it. This whole cover would need to come off, and it's spring wound, so you would have to know how to wind it with a spring. So you're better off having a service center do that. But always check that. You don't want to be surprised. You don't want to be in the middle of a job and go to pull this and have that rope break, and then you can't start to saw. So it's always a good idea to keep an eye on it. All right, so I know these are a few simple tips, but there's a lot of reasons why you want to make sure you do this. If your air filter is not clean, your saw is not getting enough air, it's getting too much fuel. It's not going to run optimum performance, and you're not going to get anywhere near the chain performance that you need out of the saw. Secondly, you want to make sure that you keep all these air passages clear. Debris is, is a killer on saws. Uh, this is where the engine gets its cooling air. If these are ever blocked, the engine is going to run hot. That's where you're going to get your most damage and wear to your engine. Third thing is you want to always make sure that underneath this cover that any sap, tree grit, uh, sawdust in here gets cleared out. Because if it blocks the oiling hole, it blocks any oil going to the bar, you're going to have an issue with your chain and your bar overheating. So, by not taking these steps, what would happen is you would have engine failure, you would not get optimum performance out of your saw, it's not going to run to its ultimate performance as far as fuel consumption, it's going to consume more fuel. You could have a, a overheating and a catastrophic failure. So those are three things you really want to make sure that you do every time you maintain it. Alright, so those are your basic maintenance tips. There are going to be some things that you cannot perform as a homeowner that are going to have to go into a service dealer for. Some of those things would be cleaning out the fuel tank, uh, old gas sitting in a fuel tank uh, can leave deposits in that tank that should be cleaned out. Old oil sitting in the oil tank can also create deposits. You might want to get the oil tank cleaned out. There are areas around the flywheel and other areas of the saw that you can't get to without dismantling the outer casing. You might want to have a dealer do that. He can do a thorough cleaning of the inside. Thank you for listening. If you got any other questions, please leave a comment below. If not, we'll see you later.